Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord hath filled the whole world, alleluia, and that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord hath filled the whole world. Alleluia. And that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who has at this time to teach the hearts of thy faithful people by sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, favorably, to receive the prayers of thy church, that all adversity and error be done away, she may serve thee in untroubled freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is written in the eighth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the fifth verse. In those days, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached the Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Hearing the lesson. Alleluia, alleluia, O send forth thy spirit, and they shall be made, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. Come, Holy Ghost, and fill the hearts of thy faithful people, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time, Jesus called his twelve disciples to sit together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor scrip, nor bread, nor money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house ye enter into, there abide, and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you, then go ye out of that city, shake off from the very dust from your feet, for a testimony against them. And they departed, and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So today we are continuing our theme of Whitsunday. Of course, Sunday was actual Whitsunday or Pentecost, uh, where we celebrated the coming of God the Holy Ghost and descending upon the disciples. So Sunday, the, the emphasis I tried to make in that sermon was in looking at the story from the Acts of the Apostles, you see in there the story of these people receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit and being able to speak in tongues. And, and, and I'm not talking about the kind of tongues that sometimes you see where people are, are claiming to be speaking in tongues, but it's what we call glossagoglia. In other words, it's just kind of gibberish sounding. 
Uh, that's not the type of, of tongues we're talking about. But we're talking about the type of gifts of tongues where people who didn't speak a foreign language were suddenly proclaiming the gospel in a foreign language. So you had all these people there from the other towns uh, who would come to Jerusalem for the feast day uh, and could hear the gospel in their own language and take it back. So we use that as a jumping off point to talk about how important it is to realize that the work of the Holy Spirit is in one, in one very important way about evangelism. Right? It's about our being able to take the message of Jesus Christ and the good news of our salvation and sharing it with other people. Uh, on Tuesday, at our Tuesday, Whit Tuesday Mass, because right, it's not just Whit Sunday, but there's Whit Tuesday as well, and Whit Monday, but the Whit Tuesday Mass, we talked about from the lesson from John's Gospel about unity, that the importance of the work of the church is that God the Holy Spirit is to help us to bring unity to all members of the body of Christ. And, and it's no, no uh, uh, surprise and it's no uh, uh, big news that there's a lot of division in the church. Uh, there's a lot of division even within the denominations, uh, people who are, are, are questioning the preaching of the gospel and how it's done. Um, this unity is divided because of human sin. It is not God's will that there be thousands of Christian denominations. Differences are okay. Um, you know, it's okay if one parish is high church and another parish is low church. I don't know why you want to be low church, but that's just me. Um, as long as we're both proclaiming the same gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and so we need to ask God the Holy Spirit to help us to get over our sad divisions and help us to begin to work together as a united witness to the world of the saving love of Jesus Christ. Wednesday after Pentecost is an ember day. So yesterday we prayed with special intentions for the ordained ministry. And so we talked in yesterday's sermon a little bit about how it is God the Holy Spirit who's whispering into the ears of those men who are thinking and discerning about vocations, as well as all of those committees that are involved in the ordination process, the vestry and the parish commission on ministry, the bishop's commission on ministry, the bishop himself, the, the seminary staff, all of them are guided and governed, I hope, uh, and inspired by the Holy Spirit to help them to make good choices about the men who will lead the church in the future so that those men can then receive the charism of ordination, which is an ontological change. Once you're a priest, you have an ontological, you cha you're a changed person. Uh, and that work is the work of the Holy Spirit. And of course, the ability to preach and to teach and to minister and do all these things is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So it's a, a really good to have an Ember Day uh, during Pentecost. It always falls during the week of Pentecost. Today we hear in, God, in, in the book story of the Acts of the Apostles about another gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is the healing ministry. Uh, the healing ministry is a vital part of what the church does. Uh, we actually heard in yesterday's Acts of the Apostles lesson that when St. Peter walked by, people would put, him, put their sick by the side of the road, so hoping that even Peter's shadow would fall on them and they would receive the healing grace. We, I, we don't often see that type of, of powerful uh, healing ministry in that effect. But, but God is still very active in the healing ministry of the church because ultimately the good news of Jesus is about reconciliation and it's a type of healing that is healing the breach between God and man. Our physical illness is the result of original sin, right? Not, it could be actual sin, right? You smoke two packs of cigarette a day for 40 years and you get cancer. That, that's actual sin, right? You've been smoking and it caused cancer. But the fact that your body can get cancer, the fact that people who've done nothing at all uh, and come up with all sorts of diseases uh, and they have nothing to cause it, uh, is the part of the reality of our fallen condition. That, that we are affected by original sin and we are affected by physical illness. But yet God intervenes in all sorts of amazing ways through the healing ministry of the church. We have the laying on of hands here. Uh, yesterday, I, I, I went and visited one of our parishioners who is at a physical rehabilitation facility. Um, she's got a blood issue. Um, they said her blood level was really low again and she's gonna need a new transfusion. We prayed together, she received communion. Uh, we prayed for healing this morning. They took another blood level. It's up above where she needs a transfusion. That's never happened before, right? That's the work of God, the Holy Spirit, and uh, the, the mercy of Jesus Christ that she's been received a, a reprieve. Uh, from her declining health. Now, whether she'll receive complete and utter healing, and, and will, that's not up to us to know. But God has intervened in a miraculous way in, in this one particular position, and we give God all the glory for that, right? Because it's his work. He's just using the faithful people to pray and to, and to remind each other of God's saving mercy, as well as the work of the church 
through what we call holy unction or, or the anointing of the sick, like we do here on Wednesday. So anyway, I hope I'm giving people a, a nice taste of all the things that God the Holy Spirit is able to do, that he's powerful and he's active, he's at work. And so whether we're suddenly preaching the gospel in a language we don't know, or we're somehow involved in, in bringing unity to the church, uh, or involved in the healing ministry, uh, or using it as an opportunity for evangelism, uh, God the Holy Spirit is certainly there with us uh, at all times. He's here with us at all times. Uh, and so we can ask him to empower us, to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding and fidelity and piety and all of those sort of things uh, and the ability to really love as God intends us to love. That's all a wonderful work of God the Holy Spirit. So ask him. Don't be afraid of him. Right? A lot of people are afraid of God the Holy Spirit because they, they're afraid somehow he'll, he'll make them enthusiastic or make them, make them actually really devoted to it. Um, but do it. Do it because God wills it. Uh, and he is right here with us in order to lift us up and to make us holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Establish the thing, O God, that thou hast wrought in us. For thy temple's sake at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Alleluia. Blessed art thou, O Lord God, of all creation. Of thy goodness we this bread to all the fruit of your kingdom. We come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of all creation, of thy goodness. Give this wine to offer, through the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for it. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty. Beseech thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the primates of our Anglican communion. For when will the bishop of our diocese, for keep my bishop protector, for the clergy of this parish, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Pray for Nadine, thanksgiving for her healing, her continued blessing, We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life, 
in my faith and fear. Especially for Robert. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace to follow the good examples of St. Mary, St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ, sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. Provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the innocent life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ hath to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also with St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also with St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bound to do that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Ghost came down as at this time from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness with fervent zeal constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou, with thy tender mercy, didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
likewise after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy duly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify. With thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits of death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sin and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs on the thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. We will you again for the Lord. I will see you in heaven. Call on the Lord. 
board, which is what you do in social networks. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was good. Preserve thy body and soul. Break this in and say, Christ, what we should for you. Let us pray. Cleanse our hearts, O Lord, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and make them fruitful by the inward sprinkling of the dew of his grace. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.